Today in this class, I will discuss all the three, four, and five marks textual question and answers from the poem The Brook. This is a chapter included in the syllabus of Alternative English for HS second year. In the previous class, I have already discussed all the one and two marks questions of this chapter. I will provide the link for that video in the description. Please note, you can download the PDF of these notes from the link given in description. You can also watch all the other classes using the link given in description. So let's see the first question. Quote the refrain of the poem The Brook. Explain it briefly. Answer will be. The part of a poem or song that is repeated multiple times is called the refrain. In the poem The Brook, one of the refrains is. For men may come and men may go. But I go on forever. There is a lot of deep thought in this refrain. It serves as a constant reminder to readers that nature represented by the brook is eternal while human life is transitory. The poem's unity is maintained and further emphasized by the refrain. Let's see the next question. Which lines in the poem compare the brook to a human being? Answer will be. The comparison is brought in the refrain. For men may come and men may go. But I go on forever. These lines bring a powerful difference between the transient idea of people and the everlasting progression of nature represented by the brook. Let's see the next question. Describe in brief the journey of the brook in the early part of the poem. Answer will be. The highest hill ranges where the dwelling places of aquatic birds like coots and herons is the starting point for the journey of the brook. It suddenly moves and glistens out among the ferns as it fights down a valley. The brook swiftly descends numerous hills, maneuvers between ridges and travels through numerous small villages, bridges and a small town. It prattles on its stony way and jabbers with murmuring giggling like a youngster as it streams into eddying inlets. It curves as it passes by the farms of a man named Philip, fields bathed in bright sunlight, before joining an overflowing river. Let's see the next question. Discuss in brief the beauty of nature as described by the poet in the poem. Answer will be. In his poem, The Brook, Lord Tennyson depicts the path taken by the brook as it descends from the remote hills to join the overflowing river in the valley below, capturing the splendor of nature at its finest. The highest hill ranges, where the dwelling places of aquatic birds like coots and herons is the starting points for the journey of the brook. It suddenly moves and glistens out among the ferns as it fights down a valley. The brook swiftly descends numerous hills, maneuvers between ridges and travels through numerous small villages, bridges and a small town. As it flows into a dying base, it chatters on its stony path babbles like a child's gurgling laughter. It curves as it passes by the farms of a man named Philip, fields bathed in bright sunlight, before joining an overflowing river. As the stream proceeds with its invigorated and cheerful excursion in the midst of the verdure of the countryside, it conveys the bloom and frothy peas along and joyfully offers shelter to fishes like trout and grayling. The brook encounters a number of obstacles on its journey, including golden gravel, stones and pebbles. In addition, it sneaks quietly across grasslands, through hazels, Past forget me nots, flips, glooms, glances, and murmurs in the night sky, and finally joins the gushing river. As a result, the poet has vividly and picturesquely depicted nature's beauty throughout the poem. Let's see the next question. 
How does the poet convey the central idea of the poem through the journey? Answer will be. In his poem, The Brook, Lord Tennyson depicts the path taken by the brook as it descends from the remote hills to join the overflowing river in the valley below, capturing the splendor of nature at its finest. The highest hill ranges, where the dwelling places of aquatic birds like coots and herons is the starting points for the journey of the brook. It suddenly moves and glistens out among the ferns as it fights down a valley. The brook swiftly descends numerous hills, maneuvers between ridges, and travels through numerous small villages, bridges, and a small town. As it flows into a Dean base, it chatters on its stony path babbles like a child's gurgling laughter. It curves as it passes by the farms of a man named Philip, fields bathed in bright sunlight, before joining an overflowing river. As the stream proceeds with its invigorated and cheerful excursion in the midst of the verdure of the countryside, it conveys the bloom and frothy peas along and joyfully offers shelter to fishes like trout and grayling. The brook encounters a number of obstacles on its journey, including golden gravel, stones, and pebbles. In addition, it sneaks quietly across grasslands, through hazels, past forget-me-nots, flips, glooms, glances, and murmurs in the night sky, and finally joins the gushing river. This journey of the brook is a representation of nature as everlasting whereas human life is short-lived and transitory. This idea is clearly exhibited in the refrain of the poem. For men may come and men may go. But I go on forever. Okay, that is it for today. We'll see you in the next video.